before going to this uh, gate level modeling uh, let's just rush to this uh, you know uh, some design here so that you will understand what we are doing actually in gate level so uh, this one if you see this uh, let me take this uh, is a, this is the logic diagram uh, for multiplexer so what is required for a gate level uh, development is this logic diagram is required. The mo moment you talk about logic diagram, it means you are talking about the internal required gates. That information uh, must be known to the designer. So that's where this uh, gate level uh, uh, comes into the picture. So now let us uh, start with the uh, gate level modeling. So this gate level modeling, few points, few theory, uh, just uh, uh, you know, one minute I will cover this theory. So it designed at a low level of abstraction gate level. So we, we have seen several abstractions. Uh, if you remember in our first session, we have seen several levels of uh, abstraction. First is a that switch level. You, re uh, you remember switch level? Uh, this is the lowest level of abstraction. In this switch level, we have uh, all that uh, keywords. We have NMOS, we have PMOS, so these uh, keywords are available. We have CMOS. So these keywords are available. So at this level, switch level, what is required is transistor level of uh, information is required. Transistor level. How these transistors are connected to each other. For example, this is the inverter if you take. In this fashion, it is connected. This is connected to VDD and uh, this is connected to ground here. This is connected to ground. So this level of information is required uh, at the switch level. But we are talking about uh, this gate level. So in this gate level, this is the uh, uh, least uh, abstraction, I mean lowest abstraction possible in the very large like DL, this, this switch level. The second one is this gate level. The bit higher abstraction, we can say bit higher abstraction than switch level is a gate level. So most digital design is now done at gate level uh, this is, uh, uh, is done at gate level or higher level of abstraction at this point what we have to understand is this is uh, the uh, by the time this book has written from where i have taken this contains uh, that is uh, that book is samir palnetkar samir palnetkar is the guy who is ha having authority over this eda tools and the language so from his book, I have taken this contents. So th that guy has mentioned this digital design is a, is now done at gate level. So but this is at the time when some 10 years ago, possibly, this is valid. This is valid at 10 years ago. But now this is not uh, valid. This is not valid. 99 uh, percentage is done using behavioral level mode. So that is a higher abstraction level. That is a, that this will be co covered in a later later sessions. So this is a behavioral level modeling. Industry uh, uses this one, 99 percent. One percentage chances are there that they, they will use even this gate. So, but the point here is, uh, this is uh, how this is uh, uh, most digital design is now done at gate level or higher abstraction level. At gate level, the circuit is described. At gate level, the circuit is described in terms of gates. This is very obvious. No need to uh, give any sort of explanation. At the, since we are talking about gate level, then obviously circuit is described in the in terms of gates, not in terms of this uh, transistors. In terms of gates, such as AND gate, NAND gate, like that. Hardware design at this level is intuitive for a user with a basic knowledge of digital design because it is possible to see one-to-one -one correspondence between the logic circuit diagram and the very log description. So here, hardware design at this level is intuitive. This is, uh, you know, it's a sort of compelling to the user. This uh, initiation or uh, intuitive is a compelling to the user. What it is compelling, what it is uh, uh, causing in, uh, to the user, the one who uses, since he or she knows some some basic basic knowledge about the digital de design this sort of uh, uh, awareness this sort of awareness here we have this uh, example i've shown this sort of knowledge is there with the 
beginner so that beginner will be now uh, will be fond of doing some designs will be looking desirous to develop some designs so for them it is okay which one is okay this uh, gate level is okay so that is what the hardware design at this level is uh, intuitive for a user with a basic knowledge of digital design because it is possible to see one to one correspondence between logic circuit diagram and the very logic actually the lowest level of abstraction is switch level modeling that we already seen however with the designs getting very complex very few hardware designers work at switch level this this point now it's valid even for this this point i was telling you people will not be using nowadays this uh, in industry they mostly use behavioral level 99 percentage one percentage i'm giving for gate level so the reason is very complex designs cannot be done at the gate level very complex uh, designs are done at the uh, behavioral level model so guys uh, you have to remember that but since why we are taking then this topic this topic is taken because the course is uh, basics of very log hdl so we are starting from the basics that's why we, are, we have to undergo even this ability of the language so gate level modeling uh, learning objectives in this what we are going to learn identify logic gate uh, primitives provided in verilog what all the primitives are available in the verilog uh, language that we are going to look into understand instantiation of gates how do you make use of gates that one we are going to uh, see understand how to construct verilog description from the logic diagram in back here so this this uh, learning objectives just i was talking about learning objectives here identify uh, uh, logic gate primitives provided in the verilog one thing that we are going to learn is how many verilog uh, i mean uh, uh, primitives are there primitives means those logic gates are there provided by the language that one we are going to look into the learning objectives of this uh, gate and modeling is that next is understand instantiation of gates how do we uh, instantiate gates and what truth table we, uh, these are uh, abided by these gates are going to follow that we are going to look into and then understand how to construct a very long description from the logic diagram. From the logic diagram, how do we build a circuit using this primitive gates? That is the third objective. The fourth objective of this uh, gate level modeling is to see this rise delay, fall delay, and turn off delay in a gate level. And every delay, this rise delay itself got divided into three, minimum, maximum, and typical. This modeling is required in some cases, where circuit behavior time constraints, this, uh, there are time constraints. So this I will talk about later on. At this point, I don't want to confuse. I don't want to get into the time constraints and all. I just want to tell that the in gate level, we have this uh, rise delay, fall delay, turn off delay provision. Using delays, we can uh, uh, introduce the effect of rise delay, fall delay, turn off delay. Each delay again, we can have minimum, maximum, typical. So this point I will take up elaboratively in some other session. But at this point, I'm just leaving this. This, this, this I'm not taking for discussion. I'm I'm going straight to the uh, how we are using the gates. A logic circuit can be designed by using uh, by use of these logic gates. By use of uh, this is very obvious. There's nothing much to discuss here. Verilog supports a basic logic gate. This is again uh, uh, as predefined primitives. What we call technically this uh, basic logic gates provided by the Verilog that Verilog supports, we call them predefined primitives. We call them. So to the new learner, there I am telling this. These primitives are instantiated like modules, except that they are predefined in Verilog and do not need a module definition. This is also uh, to the new uh, comer, new learner. That the point here is, you people have seen already that uh, while we are developing a, any module, for example, this module we are developing, this module of half adder. Last previous sessions we have demonstrated how to write a uh, test bench for this half adder. So at that point we developed a half adder uh, description. So th that half adder description started with a keyword module, and here some port list, and here some description this area, and then end module. Such, such, this a module and n module. This is not required when you talk about these primitives. When you talk about these primitives, primitives without module and n module, straight away those keywords you can use. For example, this and is a keyword. 
NAND is a keyword. So to use this NAND, to use this AND, to use this OR, straight away we can instantiate them. The way we instantiated this half adder in test bench. You people uh, in a previous uh, class, you have seen how do we instantiate a design in the test bench and apply stimulus to the design. We demonstrated by taking a half adder example. At that time, you have seen how we are instantiating this half adder there. So that way, these keywords are used here inside here. There is no module and end module. So not to confuse you, not to further uh, take a theoretical approach, let us straight go to the uh, uh, how to use these gates. The, 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 so far, we are talking about AND gate, OR gate, buff if 0, buff if 1, not if 0, not if 1. Such gates, how do we use? Straight we are going to that, we are rushing to that. And this R gate have one scalar output and multiple scalar inputs. This is again one more point that uh, a new learner should know. What is that? This one you see here, this is the AND gate. This is the AND gate. This AND gate may have one to N inputs. And each input here, this uh, this nth input and any input for that matter is a type scalar. Is, type, is a type scalar. So that's the point here. That's the point is scalar. It, it, it is not a vector vector type. And similarly, this output is not a vector type. Output is a scalar type. That point we have to remember. And how many inputs possible with uh, the language pro provided primitives? Answer is n n. Uh, inputs are possible. So the first terminal in the list of gate terminals is an output. So when you try to instantiate your AND gate, uh, in between I just call uh, Satish each time after uh, once in a while so that I can assure. Uh, Satish, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, so don't mind Satish, uh, uh, in a while I will be keep calling like that because uh, I'm not uh, knowing whether when we are going, going, getting disconnected. Okay sir, no problem. Okay, thank you. So uh, uh, the first terminal, when you instantiate a gate, this is how you instantiate. You first use the keyword and then you put parentheses. Inside parentheses, what comes is a port list. In this port list, the rule is, this port list, the rule is, first, first port must be output port. First, first one that comes here, first one is the output port. This one, when we disconnected, at that time I, I had drawn this one, uh, thinking you people are seeing this. One. So this and, open the parenthesis, first output, put the output, comma, followed by that n number of inputs. In1, comma, in2, comma, uh, dash 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 i n one n number of input this this one this 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 one I'm talking about n number of inputs are possible so that's how you instantiate remember a very simple formula first you have to use a keyword that is a very much familiar to that uh, you know you see this and you have used in STLD or you have used in STLD XOR you have used in STLD switching theory and logic design NAND also you have used NOR also you have used XNOR also you have used. So the, like, the, like this, these are the keywords. These keywords you straight use and open the parenthesis. And you put a output identifier first, comma, then input identifier. For example, if you are AND gate having something like A, a uh, this B, and output is a one. So how do you use in the very last simply AND? Keyword, door case, and first one cannot be a input. First one must be output identified. Why? And then a comma inputs, and then terminate with a semicolon like that. So that is the point. The first terminal in the list of gate terminals is an output, and other terminals are inputs. The output of a gate is evaluated as soon as one of the inputs changes. That is very obvious. When we disconnected this one I drawn. So there are a number of inputs here. One, two, n inputs are there here. 
very obviously any one any input is instantly if it is changing instant, uh, in a for a given time so very instantly this output will be seen. the effect of this is seen. so that is the point here so let us go to the, to the gates here this is in stld this uh, when disconnected this i wrong so stld and you know this is how we uh, you know the symbols of these gates it is known to you nothing much to discuss here that's the point i'm telling you. and coming to here gate instantiation how do you do this is how you do this and you see here keywords uh, let me change this uh, laser this and and nand and or and nor and xor and xnor these are the keywords provided by the language and you see here a1 na1 or1 nor1 x1 mx1 these are called instantiation names this instantiation this instantiation instantiation names are they compulsory answer is no then why this one the uh, reason is this one when we disconnected i drawn this one so the uh, let me take one more time again this uh, you know where is the point so this is one one and gate this is second and gate this is uh, your or gate so for your uh, uh, readability of the code so you have here some inputs let us say a b and you have this is the y1 and let us say this is the z1 z1 so now you have some you instantiated one gate and you are writing here that is this y1 should come here y1 for this gate and you have inputs a comma b and then semicolon if you want to use only one keyword then semicolon is not required you put a comma and then uh, this output let us say uh, x2 uh, satish are you people there yes sir yes sir okay so x2 x2 comma then inputs uh, z1 comma y1 and then the moment you thought Okay, my my job of usage of this and is done. Now you can put a semicolon. Okay, that's all. Now the point is, if you don't use here this uh, this what we call this instantiation names, then there is a confusion here. Sometimes so for readability it will not be uh, okay. So suppose if you have given a name, this is the one name uh, one two. So now a one. If I use this instantiation name a one, and uh, here a two, I can say. This is AND gate two. For that, like that, for readability purpose, we can have the instantiation names. Otherwise, uh, language provided this primitives. We call primitives. When you make use of them, I mean, when you instantiate them, in, in such cases, this instantiation name is not required. That's the point I am trying to make here. Now coming to the other point here. Uh, see more than two inputs. If more than two inputs are there, and the earlier I was talking about here, if uh, more than two, meaning n are there, suppose uh, like that. So how do you instantiate them? How do you use them? So you use the way it is said already. I said here, you put first output, comma, followed by that inputs will be there. Similarly, here output, first output, comma, i n one, i n two, i n three. All these are inputs. So this is a three input NAND gate, and then gate instantiation without instance name. So that is uh, we already uh, talked about that. That is without this. That is legal. That is legal to instantiate primitives without instantiation name. But remember, guys, that it is not legal for user defined module. This module and keyword is a, a keyword. Such keyword. The legal. What is legal? Without instantiation name. This instantiation name A1. This A1 usage if you are not making also no problem. But this happens to be a user defined module. Like a half header you are instantiating HA. HA who has built? There is no user defined HA uh, primitive uh, language defined. HA is a user defined. Somewhere I just uh, we talked about here somewhere uh, this module N module. HA is a user defined. So this user-defined module, when I am trying to instantiate here, for example, suppose HA, so without this instantiation name, it is not legal. It is illegal. You have to have uh, instantiation name for user-defined modules. So this is the usage 
how you use gate instantiations. This is how you use. Now coming to this uh, truth table, guys. Truth table, how it is going to uh, follow? I mean, if uh, one input is, uh, let us say, we have these inputs here, I1 and I2. So what happens if uh, I1 is uh, high impedance state and your I2 is uh, this unknown value, what would be the output? This is unknown. This is the output. This is this way, you see. And if uh, both are held at high impedance state, that is your I1 is high, high impedance state, delta Z, and I2 is also held at high impedance state, that is Z or Z, then what would be your output? That is unknown. So if you observe carefully in every gate, this is AND gate, this is NAND gate, OR gate, NOR gate, XOR gate, XNOR gate, everywhere inside, uh, meaning uh, that is output, nowhere that is a high impedance state. Either it is a 1 or a 0 or a unknown. So that one, this is the table that we should be familiar with. So now coming to this buff, already we, we are familiar because in a previously several uh, you know, some sessions we took up we took this example buff and not so nothing much to discuss about them. So but the usage is uh, like this. So similarly, uh, earlier AND gate, NAND gate, how we use similarly buff is a keyword. Remember buff is a uh, keyword. So this is a keyword, this buff is a keyword, and not is a keyword, and this is a B1 is the instantiation name, and this output is must, you cannot have here uh, something like a buff, uh, and then uh, instantiation name, and forgetting uh, first you are putting input, and then uh, output, so if you put that way, this is thrown error by the compiler, you have to have first the uh, output, and then input. So the other one is with this fourth line is observed more than two inputs here. More than two inputs. This is possible. So like uh, so that's why uh, for in, in interview point uh, possibly uh, like uh, you know multiple output multiple output gates in the very log means this uh, buffer to give one and uh, you can have uh, output one and uh, output two. Multiple inputs are not possible here the way we had in a AND gate, NAND gate, OR gate, or in all that multiple, one to n is possible, but only one output. But in this case, in this uh, in this case also, in the NOT gate also, only one one uh, input, multiple outputs possible in the language. So this is uh, one thing that we have to be familiar with. And the uh, through table is uh, this way. But here you notice this one here, and you notice uh, this one here. Your input is high, uh, held at high impedance state. But again, if you carefully observe your output, nowhere it is the uh, high impedance state. Everywhere it is unknown or zero or one. Now coming to this uh, other keywords, we have buff if one is a keyword, not if one is a keyword, buff if zero is a keyword, not if zero is a keyword. We are already familiar because in earlier examples we have several times presented, but uh, uh, at this point I'm just not going into the discussion because we are already familiar. So, but here the point to be discussed is this uh, truth table. This truth table, if you see uh, output here, you see the high impedance state, see the high impedance state, and you see another another thing here, C, and uh, another L. This is possible in a uh, these gates buff if so one and not if one. These are also uh, called tri-state gates. These are also known as tri-state gates. So this L means it may be a zero. This this one this state zero or a. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, this uh, this is uh, one high. R Z, this is zero R Z. So both possibilities are there. Compiler, depending upon the compiler, compiler may throw zero or uh, high impedance state. Compiler may throw one, compiler may throw Z. In this case, this case. 
but we are we should be familiar with this two table nothing to worry about that uh, that that comes to practice but examine uh, that uh, the industry point of view again as i said 99 percentage people will be using behavioral level modeling one percentage we should be familiar with this because in industry if industry demands you to develop something in this then how that is going to behave this gate uh, going to be a buffet one when you have given your control input uh, high impedance state and uh, input uh, one so what would be the possible output it may come as a one that uh, who decides this one or z your compiler will the compiler will decide how do you know the um, uh, vendor will give you the manual of uh, related to that tool that way we will come to know that in that particular vendor that is cadence or uh, synopsis or mentor graphics or xilinx how they are going to treat them in case if this is uh, control is held at a high impedance state and uh, if i am giving input what would be my output so that's how you know uh, satish are you people there yes sir yes sir okay uh, so now coming to uh, gate instantiation of uh, buffif uh, one and uh, buffif Uh, not it. Why we are calling simply buffet here because it has got two buffet zero and buffet one, and this not if has got two not if zero not if one. So that's what here you see buffet one, buffet zero not if one not if zero. Remember in this case the syntax is important. Syntax earlier we said uh, for uh, all those uh, primitives AND gate NAND gate. And uh, also for uh, buff, so also for not gate, that output should come first. Here also output should come first. Remember that is the uh, first point that we have to remember. We should not be writing the way we wish. When you instantiate uh, that instantiation, this terminology also should be familiar with. So when you instantiate, what should come first? Output identifier should come first, and thereafter input. Thereafter control. So that is the uh, syntax. Syntax demands like that. So don't put that way. Whatever the output that comes, you mess up with that output. If you don't follow this one, you give it in a, some other order. If you are expecting something else, some, something else will come. So uh, ensure that this order is followed so that a correct output can be checked. So that is one point. That array of instances. This is uh, this is another point that is required to be known. For example. We have something called uh, like this. You see, uh, from six uh, to thirteen, six to thirteen. I am using a NAND gate, same NAND gate, same NAND gate, same NAND gate. Several times I am instantiating, just because them I want to uh, perform this operation. You, I have used the vector here. So don't confuse yourself earlier you said vector cannot be used here somewhere i said here vector uh, input cannot be used as a vector here you know earlier here i said it should be a scalar yes it is a scalar here also it is still scalar if you observe carefully uh, if you observe this 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 one carefully this is a scalar this output output of zero is a scalar in one of zero is a still scalar in two is a still scalar But this is the case wherein we have some, uh, uh, you know, several uh, and uh, you have this this sort of thing, this sort of thing, this sort of uh, how many total uh, total how many eight uh, zero to seven means eight. So you have something here uh, like that one all through eight 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 times you you are using that. And uh, you uh, you thought of having some inputs here. You thought of having some inputs here. In between, also gates are there, some inputs. So, but you thought not to not to write here when you declare not to write like this wire. And here each you know I N one how many times total eight. So eight you you don't want to write here eight identifiers input one. Input to uh, and so on. Input, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is only for this one. I N one. Similarly, if you don't want to write again, uh, I N two zero. Uh, here it would have been I N one zero, I N two zero like that. So and then I N eight zero. You don't 
want to write that that pain you don't want to take that is a laborious job several uh, identifiers you you have to write like that the okay? laborious job so you, what you have planned is instead of writing several times like that you have planned a vector you have planned for this i n 1 what you have planned you have planned a vector this is the vector declaration now this i n 1 you can access this one i n 1 of 0 or through like that i n 1 of 7 this is for this i n 1 of 0 this one i n 1 of 2 this one likewise this i n 1 8 so now you avoided this laborious job with this vector now this one you want to have in this fashion this is the way shown 6 to 13 but you again here again you have to carry out laborious job again this anyway you avoided with the vector this one you avoided with a vector type declaration but this one again laborious job you you, you have to carry out no several times like that you have to write even you thought of avoiding this laborious job so that is very well language is facilitating this golden opportunity at line 4 at line 4 you see the golden opportunity golden provision not opportunity golden provision the golden provision is mand the keyword this keyword and yen underscore gate this is instantiation name yen underscore gate is a instantiation name here and then how many times you want that i want get 0 through 7 total 8 so i'm just putting here this is in this fashion that is syntax demand this this having a square bracket and here ending with a square bracket and putting this uh, you know this one uh, range range specification so this one and the inside parenthesis you simply have to put this variable this variable out first and then this so what you have done magically now you have magically done with the language provided facility laborious this identified declaration for in one alone eight times and i n2 alone eight times and out alone eight times all such have been packed nicely with this vector and now coming to this this one instead eight times instantiating this way packed type of instantiation with the help of this you happily put in a one one here the other one is here so in, in with the two statements you get rid of all this stuff all this wire 8 and this wire i n to 8 wire again for output 8 and then this 8 times is that is that clear to everyone there uh satish yes sir yes. okay okay so that's that's the power of this very long uh, instantiation array what we call this uh, array 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 instantiation if array type is there, this this is the syntax. Now gate level multiplexer. One example we take here, we understand, explore this one. Let us instead going to this all theory, let us go to this uh, multiplexer straight. What is that multiplexer? Everyone knows that. When we I have this zero zero here, the, my select line zero zero. I want this output to be available on the output uh, input to be available onto the output uh, you know output net when zero one comes whatever there this this net may be having uh, zero or one whatever the value this i1 net having that value needs to be in onto the output net similarly one zero similarly one one mm -hmm. for that what we are putting we are putting this way we are putting this way i3 alone will not come i3 on i3 net whatever that value is there zero is there or one is there that is seen onto this output net that is the meaning of putting this way now from this uh, functional table or truth table truth table or functional table of this multiplexer we are building this logic diagram a designer should be able to know first what designer should know he or she functional table or truth table of the uh, hardware that they are intending to develop that must be known to the designer from that 
they must develop logic diagram. This is the logic diagram developed. From this, I can happily make out this out equal to this i uh, i naught and this uh, yes yes o bar and yes one bar plus I can keep going like that i one and then uh, yes one bar. So that's the reason why I take here i uh, zero straight. And if you see yes yes zero and yes one bar, they are inverted here. They, they are inverted yes one and yes. Zero. They are inverted. So inverted. So this is yes one negative, yes not negative. So they are straight taken here, and that is our y zero. I am calling it as a y zero. This one. Next plus this one, the, the other one here. This one is called as a y one. The other one is called as a y two. The other one is called as a y three. On what I am doing, I am ring right here plus. So that's why this R gate is needed. And now finally this net output. Now from this, how we uh, what is required? Uh, how many times? Which gate is required? This gate, if you see, this uh, AND gate one, two, three, four. Four AND gates are required. So Verilog is facilitating you AND gate, so you can use your AND gate AND, and then within this here. What is that you can uh, use here? Y zero, Y zero. Output output should come first according to syntax. Comma, I I zero, and then this one yes yes one, N, and then comma, yes zero N. Put, close this parenthesis and put a semicolon. So this is done with this first AND gate. Similarly, second AND gate. Similarly, third uh, third AND gate. Like that, you have to cover. In order to develop this one here, what one gate is required? Not gate is required. You have the keyword called not gate, not, and open the parenthesis. What is this? Yes one n. Output should come first. Yes one n, comma. Now what is this you are giving? Yes one, identify. So put a semicolon. If you don't want to instantiate multiple times this keyword not, what you have to do here? You shouldn't be putting a semicolon. Rather, you would be putting a comma. And then use this one. What is their other? Uh, this one. Uh, yes zero. Yes o. Yes zero n. And then this is coming. Yes zero. Now you are done with. Uh, suppose if you think uh, I don't need any more uh, not gates. Since you are done, now you can put semicolon. If you are putting semicolon here itself, then you have to use one more not instantiation. And then this time yes zero yeah, uh, n comma yes zero and then semicolon. Here also you have to put in that case semicolon. So if you want to make use of only one time instantiation of the keyword, then you have to separate them with a uh, this uh, comma. The last one there you have to terminate with a uh, semicolon. So that is the thing that is you are going to do with that. Now coming to the final one. Finally, R gate is there. So what is required? Our keyword instantiation is required, and within parentheses, what is the rule set forth by the language? First output should come. What is the output identifier in our case? Is the out, comma. What are the uh, uh, inputs here? Inputs are this now. Y zero, comma like that. Y one all through Y three. Now terminate with a semicolon. So now you have done with the, your NOT gate here. And this uh, AND gates here, all these so four AND gates, one R gate. So meaning what you have done with the complete mapping of this logic diagram to the primitives. These primitives are provided by the language. So mapping of this logic diagram is done to the primitives. So that is what this uh, this code. If you see, if you see module, what is module? You know, every very long HDL, very long HDL description of a design or a test bench will start with a keyword module. That's the module keyword. Space. What is this? It's a module name. We have some rules. The previous uh, videos you see, rule is it should not be a keyword. It should not start with a dollar sign. Such rules are there in the previous recorded videos. It is there. So we have to follow those rules, and we have to put a name of that module. Open the parenthesis. Here, this port list. 
if you see our 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 this one here what are the primary inputs i0 i1 i2 i3 s1 s0 out remember in the previous recorded videos uh, revise i said difference between primary inputs and primary outputs and intermediate and inter and intermediate uh, generated signals they may be uh, outputs and inputs for example if you see satish are you people there yes sir yes sir yes okay. sir okay okay so if you see this y0 y1 y2 y3 this is in for this gate it is output but for this gate they are inputs so those are in intermediate so such intermediate uh, input or output them you don't need to declare here that is the prime uh, 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 you know a thing that you have to remember in important thing what what goes here is a primary inputs and primary outputs only remember in the port list and primary inputs primary output means these are called primary inputs this i0 through this s0 i i0 i1 i2 i3 s1 is but intermediate you see s1 n is there intermediate is intermediate inside this block inside this block whatever that is there you see those are intermediate signals such intermediate signals you will not be putting in the port list area what should go in the port list area only primary inputs and primary outputs that is the prime thing now comes output keyword and this what all the identifiers are there in this case only one identifier that is out another keyword input input is a keyword all lower case remember and this i0 i1 i2 i3 another uh, another uh, in uh, keyword input s1 s0 uh, is here now the question uh, some someone may ask can i use only one keyword yes happily you can use in that case you should not be using this semicolon comma you you get this all stuff here you get this all stuff here the so finally this was semicolon like that like that With, with one keyword input you can do and and someone may have a doubt uh, can i put input fast here and then later on output yes you can put in a user defined modules it is okay in a user defined this is a user defined module but there are uh, uh, you know uh, what we call user defined primitives uh, modules are different and uh, some primitives are the, uh, there So UDPs, what we call user-defined primitives, U D P, that is a separate topic in the very language DL. So UDPs, user-defined primitives. You, you have seen so far language-defined primitives, right? What are the language-defined primitives? Several gates are there. Multiple uh, inputs, single output gates are there. Single input, multiple output gates are there. In this current session, we have seen in previous slides. Again, I cannot go back to uh, because just uh, to save the time. So those are called language-defined primitives. Likewise, user-defined primitives also are there, wherein output should come first. Wherein output should come. This this sort of declaration first, fourth one, and then this one. Where this rule is applicable, not in user-defined modules. It is applicable in a user-defined primitives. User-defined primitives are different. User-defined modules are different and currently what we are discussing this program is a user defined module not user defined primitive so uh, now coming to this internal uh, internal wire declaration you see this wire declaration in internal wire s1 n this 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 you go back here this s1 n s0 n y0 y1 y2 y3 them we are calling wire That is the wire here. You see the wire keyword. You see the wire. What is wire? Wire is a keyword. So now here again the same question. Someone may have: uh, Can we, uh, we use? Can I use single wire and declare everything here? Yes. In that case, you shouldn't be terminating with a semicolon. Separate with a comma. Get this entire stuff here, and finally this semicolon here. In that case, single wire is enough. This wire we can eliminate. Okay, that's the point here. And one more point: if you don't declare, what happens? Can uh, will compiler throw error? If you don't declare this wire, if you forgot by mistake, if you have forgotten, 
these are remember scalar type scalar type y by mistake if some designer forgetting scalar type y language compiler is going to treat such undefined variables like uh, suppose we forgot to declare here but we are using here here see we are using here uh, we are using here we are using here will compiler throw error means answer is no so from this what is the conclusion undefined scalar words language going to read them like white undefined identifies undefined undefined you are not defining you you forgot simply you forgot this and but you are using this identifies they are treated like what scalar wires by whom language compiler is that clear Every, everybody if you don't define and you are using such s1n yes, and uh, here somewhere uh, this this y0 y1 y2 y3 if you forgot to declare here but compiler is going to read them as a scalar wise that is the point so with this you understand here uh, uh, this is a module and the module let us quickly summarize this module module name and this order here this order again can uh, someone may have doubt should i have <coughs> first output here can i have first output uh, input declaration all this input declaration and then i want to put out and then terminate close this uh, parenthesis and terminate with a semicolon can i do that way answer is yes for in a module user defined modules it is okay but in a user defined primitives it is not okay is that clear so this is uh, uh, that's that's how you are you have done here declaration this point, point now you are using the gates here not gate not gate and and gate and gate and gate four and gates and finally your or gate and then end mod i was talking about this i wrap this session with this can i use single not gate and uh, do with the single not gate instead to, uh, to means answer i said already i explained don't use semicolon use comma and in that case you don't need this not gate you put this 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 stuff this stuff completely here here uh, after comma after comma means uh, here and then semicolon yes you can do that similarly here the also answer is same uh, can i use single and gate means answer is yes you, you you just avoid this semicolon everywhere everywhere semicolon everywhere semicolon and uh, in that case you can uh, happily remove this and gate usage and this entire stuff you put after separating with a comma uh, and this also after separating with a comma and this one also after separating with a comma finally this semicolon should be there finally this semicolon should be there in that case you can do with a single and gate there shouldn't be any confusion for everyone there so now finally you have one or gate so that's the or since single or gate so we go with single or gate but remember in every case here this not gate and gate uh, this or gate what is coming first output identifier followed by that input identifier everywhere you cannot mess up here you can you can do here first output uh, input declaration and then later on output no problem but in a gate instantiation remember first output identifier followed by that input identifier that you cannot mess up so everywhere if you carefully observe even for and gates here y0 y1 y2 are the outputs for these and gates but coming to the or gate these y0 y1 y2 y3 are acting like a input that's why they have come here and then output has come first here and uh, that's all uh, the, about this uh, description i will share with this ppt with you people today possibly and uh, everybody what i'm uh, concluding uh, my concluding remarks are today you copy paste this uh, uh, you code multi uh, you know very long description of this multiplexer gate level and there is a test bench here this test bench also try to explore this uh, test bench those who are learners try to explore what i have done here what i have done here i have done here and uh, this is how already because you are familiar one one is already demonstrated to you people and uh, how this is actually applied input applied so everything you explore uh, today tomorrow i will take up this uh, this needs to be discussed with the new learner there 
probably discuss this test bench tomorrow.